story time. When I moved to Milwaukee in 2008 and I was thinking about buying a house, I needed a real estate agent and I did what most people would do. You either ask a friend for a recommendation or you look online. In my case, I picked up one of those pamphlets that they used to have at the grocery store and I called the first agent, didn't pick up, called the second one, didn't pick up, the third one picked up. So guess what? That was my real estate agent. Not a very sophisticated approach, you might say. And how that worked out for me, I'll tell you later in that video. So now we have some changes in the industry since August uh, 2024. The NAR settlement changes are in effect and that changes how agents are being paid in the industry. That also changes a few things for buyers. For example, you are now required to sign a buyer agency agreement with an agent before you're looking uh, at property. So it always has been the case like this for sellers. It was always a lot more of a deliberate process. You wouldn't just go and list your house a little bit with an agent and see how it goes. No, you would find an agent, interview an agent, then you sign an agreement and then they bring your house on the market. And that works the same way for buyers now as well. And I do think uh, that is actually a good thing. But how do you actually hire a buyer's agent? So that's reason enough for me to make a video and share a few tips and tricks for you because it may surprise you i'm actually interviewing agents quite a bit for clients that move across state lines we do quite a bit of relocation uh, business and there are always or usually two halves of that transaction you're selling a house in one state you're buying a house in another state obviously i can help clients only here in the greater milwaukee area and with that we always need another agent on the other half of the transaction both deals hinged together so both of them need to work oftentimes simultaneously so it is super important that we have a strong agent also on the other side of the transaction and so in many uh, cases i find myself uh, calling and investigating and interviewing agents in another state and what i've learned over the years doing that i want to share it with you uh, so when you're making that choice you can do it with confidence that's the topic for today's video All right, so when I'm looking for an agent, I basically follow a four step process and step number one or criteria number one is experience. Obviously, because who wants to work on one of the largest financial transactions with somebody who is inexperienced? The question is though, how do you measure experience? And you might know that this industry has a very high turnover rate, about 85% of all agents give up in the first year and from whoever is left, another 80% give up in their second year. So frankly, asking how long have you been doing this is not the worst question to ask. But there is a better question to ask because years doesn't necessarily translate into experience. A better question to ask is how many transactions have you completed personally in the last 12 months? And to give you a little context, in the US we have about 4.5 million homes sold every year by roughly about 1.5 million agents. So that gives you an average only three transactions per agent. That's not a whole lot. If you do three transactions a year, you don't really know what's going on. There is a mid tier of agents that do maybe eight, 10 or 12 transactions a year. And that's a lot better. But in my opinion, proficiency starts when an agent does about 20 to 24 transactions a year. That comes out to about two transactions a month. And if you do this kind of volume, you're really engaged in the market, you know what's going on, you have your finger on the pulse, and you know where the opportunities are. Now, the even bigger thing, I think, is that knowing how to resolve issues, because most transactions will have smaller or bigger problems that uh, surface during the due diligence, during the transaction, and you want an agent who is not just figuring out solutions as they go through the transaction with you. You want somebody who has resolved these problems many times before and knows what to do about it, or even better, anticipates these issues and can prevent them in the first place instead of dealing with them uh, when they show up. So experience is a very important criteria, and I would always start with that. My step number two when I'm checking out an agent is reading their online reviews. I think we're all in the habit when we're ordering a $20 item on Amazon is that we're checking out the reviews. For some reason, a lot of consumers are skipping that step and not looking an agent up online. Um, the first place you can do that, for example, would be the agent's website. 
But quite frankly, when I do that, I sometimes get the feeling that some of these reviews, well, they might be real, but they're a little bit marketing enhanced. So I prefer to read authentic reviews and you can do this on third party websites. A really good place to start would be, for example, Google Business. As you know, Google gives you a rating from one to five stars, and you can also read the detailed reviews and what people have to say about that agent. Two other places you can look is realtor.com and zillow.com. They have a similar system with the star rating and with the detailed reviews. Just know that when an agent is very heavy on one of these platforms and has nothing anywhere else, there is a good chance that they might be buying their leads from that platform. And another one where you can look is also on Facebook. When I screen an agent, I want to see, of course, lots of five-star reviews, the more the better, and I preferably want to see them on more than one platform. I also read all the reviews and sometimes they're not very well written and I have to read a little bit between the lines. But the most important thing to me, they are from a person who actually had a working experience with that agent. They're authentic and they get a first-hand account. Step number three when I'm vetting an agent is I'm checking out their social media profiles. And when I do that, I look very purposely both on their business profile as well as their personal profile. This gives you a lot of insights on who they are, what they're doing, who they like working with, uh, etc. So there's a lot of insights. Some agents are more into home design and home decor. Others are more analytical by the numbers. And that's where you typically find me. So it's important that you find somebody who is a good match. When I'm vetting agents, I specifically look also for videos because I do want to hear that agent speak. I want to hear how they reason and how they articulate because that gives me some insights on how they are going to be negotiating a deal. I also get some idea of the personality because remember, I'm not looking for agents for myself. I'm usually looking for a client and I want to make sure that their personality are kind of jiving, that they're on the same wavelength because my client is going to be spending a lot of time with that agent. And I think it's important that they're really getting along well. So social media is my step number three. If all of this checks out, I'm ready to move on to step number four, which is giving that agent a quick call for a short interview. And that's really just a short interview. It's not an elaborate setup thing. I just call them, see if they pick up. If I get them on the phone right away, perfect. If not, then I send them a text message and ask them to give me a call back. I don't expect them to get them on the phone like right away because agents who are doing this kind of volume are usually very busy. They're either on the phone with the client or physically meeting with somebody, but I would expect them to uh, give me a text back or call me back within two or three hours. If they're not doing that, that is definitely a red flag. If an agent is on that professional level, they usually have also a schedule where they get to the office quite early and then they have a full day. So they usually stick to somewhat reasonable office hours. So I would not expect an agent to get back to me after 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. But I definitely would want them to call me first thing in the morning. Interviewing another real estate agent is, of course, a little bit easier to me because it's a peer-to-peer -peer conversation, so we can just talk shop. But here are three really easy questions that you can ask that will give you a lot of insights into an agent. So I would just call and say, hey, my name is Marcus. I'm thinking about buying a home and I'm looking for a real estate agent. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? And then the first question is designed to be an icebreaker and just to get the conversation going. So it would be something like, hey, can you tell me a little bit about the market in Wabatosa or in Brookfield? How competitive is it right now? How many listings are getting negotiated? And how many of them are selling over list price? And what are some of the typical terms and conditions that you see in competitive offers? And then listen carefully to that answer because it will either be very specific or a little bit more vague. And that will give you some insights in how well that agent can support you in your strategy and finding opportunities and also in crafting an offer that not only gets you that house that you want, but also without overpaying for it. The second question that I would ask is about experience. I would say, how many transactions have you done in the last 12 months? And that is you personally, so we don't care about how much the team did or how much the brokerage did. You want to know how many transactions they have done personally. And ideally, you want something in excess of at least 20 to 24 transactions. So a couple of transactions every month. So they're really engaged in the market. A good follow up question to that is how many of them were on the buying side and how many of them were on the listing side? 
because ideally you want somebody who has both viewpoints and can look at the transactions also from the other side because that also gives you a strategic advantage. And then finally, the last question I would have is, what are some of the things that your past clients would tell me about working with you? At this point, you have already read some of the online reviews about the agent, so you know what the clients are saying, but now hearing it from the agent, that will give you on how, like, some ideas on how that agent is looking at himself and what you can expect when you're working with them. So those are three short questions. The whole thing should not take much longer than 10, 15 minutes, and will, it will give you a really good idea of who you're talking to. All right, let's say you had a great conversation and you feel like you're on the same wavelength with the agent and you're ready to move forward. At that point, a lot of people will jump the gun and go into scheduling showings right away. And in my opinion, that is really putting the cart before the horse. So what's going to happen if you do this? You're totally unprepared, but you're looking at houses. You spend a lot of time, a lot of properties are like a hard no or just really not great listings. So you finally, finally, finally find one that is absolutely amazing. You just love the house, you love the location, and then you find out you have two hours to make a competitive offer. And at that point, it gets really stressful because you don't know what, how this usually works, what is an inspection gap, what is an escalation clause, um, is it normal that the seller is asking for post-closing occupancy and should you do that? So you're really not prepared for what's ahead of you and that can make that situation very, very stressful. And you know, most of the time you will also not get the house because you're not prepared. So what is the right next step? You need to know what's ahead of you and we usually do this in form of a buyer's consultation. And the whole point is to get on the same page, to get to know each other, and then also talk about the process step by step, all the details that you want to know from everything that goes into making an offer to a contract, to what's normal in the market, what can you expect with the different contingencies that are here to protect you, you know, everything from inspections to uh, title insurance and so on. So you want to go through all that and feel, in my opinion, totally comfortable with the entire process. So you have no more questions. And then you're really ready to start hitting the market and going to look at properties. Also, remember with the new NAR rules, now you're supposed to sign a buyer agency agreement with the agent. And I personally would not feel comfortable to sign an agreement with an agent. I haven't spent at least the time of a buyer agency consultation to go over these things and talk about that. Okay, back to my story. I promised in the beginning of the video to tell you about my personal experience working with a real estate agent buying my first home here in Milwaukee. It was actually in Sussex. So first of all, let me say she was an absolutely super nice lady. I really enjoyed working with her. She was so patient with us. Um, it was just absolutely great from this point of view. Uh, this was 15 years ago. I don't think she's around any longer. If I look back in hindsight, remember she was the one that actually picked up the phone. That was my decision criteria when I'm, I was looking for an agent. She was the first one to actually answer. In hindsight, I would say she, uh, I wish she would have provided a little bit more structure, a little bit more guidance, a little bit more market information. I was left alone making a lot of decisions like how to negotiate. It was a very different market 15 years ago. And I didn't really know what was normal, what was expected, how could I negotiate the same thing with the inspections. Overall, it worked out well because it was a relatively new home. And so overall, I had a good experience and I moved two more times. So I bought and sold a couple more properties with real estate agents. And I will never forget what that experience was for me as a client working with an agent. And today I'm trying to be that agent that I was never able to find. I have another story for you. Uh, not long ago, I was in Wauwatosa and somebody recognized me, a new homeowner recognized me from my YouTube channel. And uh, they just bought a home and they said their agent was not that knowledgeable. They had some issues. It actually ended up costing them, them some money. And uh, in hindsight, they wished they would have worked with a different agent. But they already did a few showings together, so they really felt bad about switching agents, so they, you know, stuck it out. And bottom line is, it really matters who you work with. This is a big decision. You have a lot of money at stake, and I think it's well worth it to find an agent who is a good fit for you based on skills, experience, and also personality. I think this is a good thing that came out of that NAR settlement and the new rules where we have now, where a buyer has to deliberately choose a buyer's agent to represent them and sign a buyer agency agreement before looking at houses and not just casually slide into a relationship and then that person becomes their agent by default. 
Let me know if you have some good stories to share. I want to know how you picked your first agent, what your experience was. Please put them in the comments below. If you have questions, you can put them there as well. I usually try to answer within 24 hours personally. And that's all I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.